Hello, and welcome to the Serving Love podcast. Today, we have Jonathan Ehrlich on. Hi, Jonathan. Hi. Welcome. I'm so happy to have you. Um, Just a little intro as to how we met. Uh, I was taking ISTA level two in Mexico two weeks ago already. Can't believe it's only been two weeks. Feels like 10 million lifetimes. And Jonathan is apprenticing to be faculty with ISTA. And you held a lot of beautiful space and felt your energy in the space. And you sang and played your guitar. And then you held some sessions. And we didn't connect at all. I don't even know if we said hello. Like maybe you said one thing to me in an exercise that we had. Mm -hmm. And I felt you in that moment. I was like, oh. Oh, okay. Like I could feel, I could feel you. And I just felt very curious about you. And, um, and so I wanted to reach out and here we are. So (laughs) welcome to the podcast and tell us a little bit about yourself and Mm. what you do in the world. And yeah, very curious. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, I was saying kind of before we started something in me appreciates, appreciates the fact that we didn't do the kind of getting to know you thing, um, which is, you know, fine, but I think somehow honoring, um, yeah, the mystery of, of, of meeting people in these transformational containers where, yeah, it seems like time, time space seems to work differently in those settings. So, um, yeah, I mean, for me, really the, the the core of what I love and, and what's kind of been my my fuel for my life, I think always, but but especially that forming now is really the mystery school work. And um my I feel like my life's been a series of different events of, you know, going to college and studying playwriting and visual arts and being a musician and and, and always tapping into creativity to some degree and that kind of archetype of the artist or whatever. But then starting to have a mix of of different moments of crisis in my life and relationship breakdown and 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 kind of s- tuning into the worlds of tantra and men's work and shamanic ritual, and then eventually that just spiraling into, you know, me packing my bag, going to India, leaving the states, and just having the sense that I was, taking a leap of faith to say yes to something that I didn't know. And so, yeah, long story short, it's like everything kind of like one breadcrumb just led to the next. And, and I think for me, the, when I first got to New Zealand and went to go do this training at, at Haydn temple there, there was a sense for me of like, I don't think I'm just stepping into a training. I think actually something in my inner, inner life that, that kind of is what I've been burning in inside since I was a kid. Mm really comes down to um, times on earth where we're going through something and not just individually, but as a, as a being and, and as a planet. And so I think that's, uh, that was my turning point for me where a lot of the transformational spaces and just kind of going to a workshop suddenly became, okay, I'm, I'm gonna, I think this is my life now and mm-hmm. this lineage of, of deep mystery school teachings and cosmology that kind of says, Hey, there's, there are places for the soul to land and places where individuals can go when they feel themselves as part of something bigger that's happening. And so I, yeah, that's kind of in, in a nutshell, but the last few years has been, I've been in New Zealand and been really there and, um, just returning now i've been back in the states for like a week and a half after several years so um it's like a little wow yeah culture shock here yeah 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 Mm. and i love it i love what you said i you know a lot of us on the path we go through so many different modalities and trainings and then you find that thing and you're like oh like this feels this feels like home like my soul feels alive here Mm. And so just resonating with that feeling of like, this is, this is it. Like, this is the work that I'm here to do and, and be on this path on this planet. It's so good. And I can, like, I can mm. feel that truth in your words. It feels mm. like, oh, like I can feel like my system can mm. rest in feeling like the truth of, of that mm. in you. <laughs> mm. 
Yeah. Yeah. And it's an interesting one because I feel like maybe in a parallel life, I would have, you know, followed a more linear path and kind of, um, yeah, I think maybe honored parts of my relational self and my human self that um, I think based on your makeup, finding the kind of level of intensity, whether it's outside or inside of ourselves to really like consent to, to living in a deeper current. Mm. Um, I think some people are really good at preparing themselves somatically and relationally, and then eventually stepping into that. And I think for me, I've kind of done it a little upside down, um, just another way, which is basically like quite wildly following that intensity. And then I feel like parts of my human are now starting to catch up and, and that's been, um, mm. yeah, its own kind of wild form of integration. And on one, one hand, continuing to take on more and say yes more deeply. And then also feeling, yeah, the parts of the human that are like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> and um, so I feel like each person's kind of on their own, you know, balance of how that works. For sure. And yeah, that's actually something that's been coming up for me because I've mm. been the person who's like, expand my nervous system to be able to hold the frequency of divine love. Like mm. I need to get there. <laughs> and yeah. I'm like, you know, my human body is not meant to hold that all on its own. So there's this mm. shift for me recently where I'm like, oh, I actually get to rest into the void and God and like, let that be the thing that holds me so that I can allow that current to run through my mm. system, you know, as it, as it, as it may. So yeah, I totally resonate with that being like the human body is like, what the fuck? Like, this is so, it's wild Yeah, to yeah, go to yeah. these places. <laughs> it really is. Yeah. 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 And each day finding a different, um, yeah, a different confrontation with, with what does that consent look like? You know, I think mm. being a teenager, I could chalk it up to like getting up in the morning and not wanting to go to school and like hating the fact that I had to sit through this boring class of learning these details that somehow felt so disconnected from something more intuitive in my heart and something that my soul or, you know, whatever you want to call it, that little voice of something that's mm -hmm. like, that that knows what to do and who to speak to and where to to move and how to move moment to moment but then you're sitting in class like feeling like you're just getting like beaten to death with mm -hmm. content and information that something in the soul is screaming like how am i ever going to use this in my life and so um in the same way that i think i had to you know very begrudgingly find a way to get up in the morning and drag myself to school. And I, you know, I also skipped all of school, but um, to find that consent that says, okay, yes, I'm going to somehow hang on to what lives inside of me that actually I'm not reading about in the textbooks. I'm not learning about and choosing what I'm going to major in in college, but how to hold on to that spark inside. And at the same time, um, yeah, choose to like participate in the outer world. And so I think that the tension of the inner life, making it matter enough, and then also choosing to stay in the outer life, whatever those those two, um, yeah, whatever that point of tension is inside of each person feels like that's kind of the the game that we're up to right now on a, on a bigger level as well, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, and I feel that for the collective too, for mm. sure. Yeah. I'm curious, would you give us a little download about what ISTA is because people listening may not know and um or maybe know a little bit and are very curious so i would love to hear your like yeah. how you describe it <laughs> yeah that's a good question um <laughs> yeah i mean for me you know on a, on a basic level i would say it's to level one is the 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 kind of the sex education that we never got in school you know um so I feel like there's a yeah, certain vulnerability and, and, and a liberation and a kind of just like waking up to life force that happens in the ISTA level one mm -hmm. that incorporates the body, incorporates sexuality, um, incorporates energetics and the beginnings of inner polarity. And so I think 
for me as to level one is like, yeah, it feels like it's a, it's a liberating of the life force that lives inside us. And I mean, if it sounds very simplified to just say it's, it's the sex education we never got, but I, I do feel like that's it. My sense is there's something in the soul and in the body and in the heart that maybe everyone in their own way longs for that kind of knows it's not sitting through like PE class and having this bizarre education around being taught like weird cold anatomy and then being to, having the chance to ask questions about sex. So I feel like even though it's it's not just about sexuality, whatever that pivotal moment is in someone's life where there's a sense of like the body and the heart and spirit somehow finding their way to work together in this this weird human um, instrument for me that's what is to level one is it kind of taps into that that point of of something that maybe we, we we missed or wanted in our life that maybe we got in the way that wasn't most supportive of who we are as like a you know an embodied spiritual being mm -hmm. Yeah. Beautifully said. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and I think it's also a place where something opens up in community where um, people can go to an ISTA or any workshop and maybe there can be a, a vulnerability of you go to a workshop and whatever the workshop is, and then you come back home and there's kind of like, how do I feel that thing that I felt for that week? And then I'm coming back home to my job or whatever. So I think some something starts to activate where you find others who kind of want to keep going to that, to that portal that opens during that week. And also, um, yeah. And I think people leave, you know, can leave a, a workshop feeling like, Oh yeah, that thing that woke up now, maybe I'm supposed to help vibrate that more in the community I'm in or um, yeah. Hold some, hold some point to helping that, helping more people kind of um, tap into that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The community is, this is one of the things that I love the most about, about this does mm. is uh, completing a level one. And then you're like, you're ushered in. I mean, wherever you may live, maybe there's people, maybe there's not, but the cool thing about it is there's people all over the world. Mm. So you yeah. can go pretty much anywhere and connect with community. And I'm in the Bay area and there's a big community here and there's events mm. all the time. And it's just been so beautiful to deepen in that way with people who desire to walk this path together. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm. And I would love to hear your take on level two, because for some reason, I just feel like your soul shines there. Like there's this, uh, uh, the way that I could experience, like how I feel you is like, there's a, uh, it feels, I can like feel like this, like soft, dark underbelly. Mm. There's like a peace and um, a steadiness that I, that I feel in your system when I like, even just sitting in front of you now, I can feel like, and I do feel the connection to, to the darkness, like mm. so readily available, mm. but it doesn't feel scary. Like, <laughs> <feel> like, <laughs> like <laughs> yeah. until, until you know what actually lives inside yeah, me. Yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, totally. I mean, there is a part of me that that feels at home, you know, and in, in, in that level two. And without without speaking too much about it in detail, there's yeah, I think level two for me is that moment where something inside regardless of what brings each person to a level two, not as a, um, oh, I did level one, so now I'm gonna do level two and complete this training, totally. you know? Yeah. yeah, so I think there's a, um, yeah, I think there's a moment that something starts to collapse around kind of what I was saying before to some degree of, okay, I'm gonna stop trying to manage my inner life and my outer life and, um yeah whatever that that point of no return is you know for each person in their own way around i don't want to just go to a workshop for a week and feel liberated and then go home and resume my job and not to say it has to be so extreme like then you quit your job and but but i think level two in my sense is what's happening on a bigger scale is that 
even though it's nice that there's so many different workshops and things we can do and go to, I feel like level two is about starting to tap into that knowing that if I choose to go into this place, I'm kind of to some degree invoking my own crisis, which, which basically just says, yeah, I'm, I'm taking a, a new step into the unknown and, and, and sort of, I think those are the moments where something becomes an initiation as opposed to just a workshop that's re that's really great at getting up to that portal of initiation. But yeah, for me, level two is it starts to cross into that territory of what soul initiation is. And, um, and I think the difference between signing up for something like that versus signing up for a level one is it, it's kind of a soul calling that pulls you there. So I think it's very it's very normal to like think we know why we're attending something like that, and then to show up and and something's like, wait, why am I here again? But then mm -hmm. the, the the voice asking the question, why am I here, isn't really the voice that decided to go there. So <laughs> yeah. so there's a yeah there, there's a point of willingly throwing yourself into the unknown and and um yeah and 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 choosing with a lot of love and and softness like to consent mm. to that decision to, to go to that place and that threshold. So mm. that, that's a bit of what if I feel that the level two is. Yeah. And what I feel are going to be more and more spaces and thresholds opening up for people, I think over the next, um, yeah, soon, like now the next few years. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I pray for that. Yeah. Level mm. two was that for me when I signed up, I was like, I'm going and mm. I don't have any expectations, but I just know you know, there's just like a knowing. Mm -hmm. And I came out feeling this clarity, like there's no other option for me any longer, but to be living in this, this work and, and like, mm -hmm. you know, pouring this work out of my soul into the world. Like this is, you know, it's like what I'm, what I'm here to do is to bring this, this kind mm -hmm. of awareness and consciousness to the planet and whatever, way mm. i can mm. yeah so thank mm. you level two but hot damn it was not an easy ride <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah. but i love that <laughs> mm. Mm. yeah and so let's talk about what you mean when you say like it's happening now because i i know mm. a little bit about what you're up to but i would love to hear you speak to like what these temples are and what you're planting and you're on this yeah. journey, like all over the world. And I just, mm. I would love to hear more about what that, what that looks like. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Where to begin? Um, yeah. I think the word temple or mystery school or these, these words can have such a, um, yes yeah, a sense of mystery or taboo or maybe people think it means sexuality or it means a bubble tucked away somewhere that's against society or there's so many things that come with those words and so um i think from a from a cosmological standpoint and which ultimately goes back to what i'm what i was sharing about being in school is a lot of me just views this, some part of me views this in a very like innocent kind of way that goes back to those moments in school where I was being taught things and, and moments in time around the founding of the country. And, and then next thing you know, in eighth grade, you're getting ballots where you have to suddenly select who you're going to be when you grow up. So there's a very linear story about who I am and my life and what's expected of me. And you know, I remember being on the phone with my dad in college because there were moments where I felt really inspired and moved in college by certain professors or certain classes. And then there was something else in me that was, yeah, really suffering and, and mm -hmm. was like, what the fuck is, like, what am I doing? And, and what is this diploma and all these weird things? And so, so deep down, um, I feel like each person in their own way, there's some longing for the bigger story. Mm -hmm. And to know what our place is in a much bigger cycle that's that's regardless of if you believe in God or not or whatever religion or whatever. Um, for me, the temples and the mystery schools that they they were and are they're they're 
really just points of remembering. And, and yes, they happen to emerge and fall and reemerge when, when there's specific times in, in the larger cycles of this planet, when we're moving through times of crisis and change where I kind of feel like there are these organs that, that we all remember as part of this bigger body of earth that kind of find their way up through the earth again, and then they fall and then they come back. So, so for me, temples and mystery schools are these places of remembering who we are as souls and the fact that we're not, um, I just was watching an interview yesterday. I forget the actor, but you know, he was saying like, we just have to remember that we're not, we're not human beings trying to have spiritual experiences. Like we're spiritual beings having a human experience. So, I mean, for me, that's, that's the, that's the song that the temples and the mystery schools are attuning to. And, um, and what's so cool about the mystery schools is that every time there's, there's new mysteries unfolding. So it's like what, what's happening cosmologically now, even around everything happening around dark matter and black holes and, and having this sense that, okay, we're, we're, we're going somewhere, but we don't know where we're going, but there's kind of this sense of shared prophecy that everyone can feel things are breaking we know we're entering some new cycle that we don't know the way. So that sense of being, yeah, being in communion with the unknown and going, starting to go back to our origin story that maybe wasn't the big bang, but maybe it was something darker and, and that our sources lie in us in somewhere that is not the story we've been taught. So as that, as those shifts start happening cosmologically, you know, these are the mysteries that start unfolding inside of us from the inside out. So on one hand, the mystery schools come up to start to vibrate these new mysteries. And on the other hand, the people coming into the mystery schools are already being filled up with these mysteries. So, so for me, it's, it's a big, it's a big act of through temples and mystery schools, this, this new civilization that we don't even know yet. Mm. It's, it's kind of starting to like peek its head out from the inside out. And so for me, every decision to go to a temple or, if you're called to a mystery school, the, it's kind of like a deep, yeah, vibrating of hey, I'm I'm part of a bigger shift, and I don't know the way, but I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna turn to it and see what it see what happens with with my life that I think is is mine, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I love hearing people talk about that call in themselves because mm. so many people feel it. I mean, since I was a little girl, I remember being. God, four or five years old, like so little and being like looking around, like, what the fuck is this? Like, mm. this can't be it. You know, the, the things that I'm seeing around, like this cannot be it. Mm. And so I went through my own struggles with like depression and the whole thing, because I just couldn't believe, you know, like I, my soul knew there was something mm. so much more. And, um, I feel really blessed and grateful to, to be getting to this place at the age that I am like, um, mm and, and hope to inspire, you know, even just one person through the podcast to like, oh yeah, I felt that too. And like, how do I follow that? Because it takes so much courage mm. to take that leap. Like you left and you went to India into the unknown, you know? And mm. it's like, your soul was like, I have to do this thing because mm. I can't, I can't not like, I can't live this way. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And even yeah, I really appreciate just feeling your story of like those those early days growing up because I feel like even yeah, something like this podcast, like it's massive to actually see someone and be seen by by you and to have a, a conversation that's actually about like yeah, who like who the hell actually are we and what's actually mm -hmm. happening inside and so somewhere somewhere in me, I think. Yeah, they're, they're longings that, that I go back to as a kid. That's that like somehow we, we come to this earth and it, it can be so painful being feeling that we're even a soul inside of a human body or mm -hmm. I mean, feeling, feeling we're a human, you know, in, in, in co creation with this soul that we are. That um, the longing to, yeah, be brought into a ceremony or like th there's a, there's a searching for rites of passage that don't even exist, but somehow we have, we have a reference point of a, a time either in the future or in the ancient past 
that's still here now, but but it's so confusing coming into a culture that seems to not value the the life of what lives in us. And um, mm -hmm. so, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it is seen like the soul and the personal self are so separated. And that's mm. something that I've been loving learning with this does. Like, how do I bridge the two of like understanding mm. what my personal body is needing or what those kind of desires look like? And then what does my soul actually want? And mm. being in like harmony with them both because they both are going to look different sometimes, you know? Mm. And so just like learning to be with them both eases so much of that pain and like the grief that comes with longing for this thing that we don't know how to have. Mm. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And how, and how confronting it can be to be, to start to get intimate with others where that longing can show up differently in each of us in a, in a different, unique way, you know? So even, <laughs> even being here now with some friends who, yeah, I was with the New Zealand and we all, we all know each other quite deeply. Um, it's funny how, when there is such a deep soul resonance with someone, um, yeah, I mean, I can often be quite scared of, of the, the realms of the body and of Eros and, it's taken us a few days here, even four of us to finally just like have a cuddle and mm. bring our bodies together. And so, you know, I know for me, there's, um, because of how intense I can be inside on a soul level, I'll often, um, yeah, I'll, I'll think that I'm losing purpose or I'm, you know, I have my own drama inside around if I, if I take the time to come down and, into my human, then I'll lose touch with this thing that I've needed to hold on to so desperately for my life and, mm. and others maybe have it the other way around. So yeah, even last night coming together here and having a cuddle and, and could just feel like so much um, pain rising up in my body from my last year and, and things that I couldn't even put words to, but, but, but I, I think it was, I think that was able to come up because I feel so safe um around them and and mm. seen and we see each other so yeah i feel like that that deep landing of of the body feeling safe and mm. also the longing for the soul to be seen from such a young age and not having that it's such a can be such a, such a weird um yeah kind of imprint in the body with those pieces mm -hmm. Are you open to speaking to that fear of that like physical connection? I'm curious, like if you sure, have any yeah. idea, like what came up for you with that or. Yeah. That like the moment last night. Yeah. Where you're like, oh, like, like t allowing your body to take the time, because I do think there's so much in this, especially in these communities of like, get in there and, you know, everybody's physical and like, sure. That feels authentic for a lot of people, but mm. there are are other bodies that need slowness and do have to take their time to feel safe to connect. So, yeah. 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 Um, mm. Yeah. I mean, it's multi-layered, but I feel like, you know, last night I, I think there's something about me that naturally I don't necessarily gravitate toward touchy feeliness to some degree. Another part of me loves it. Um, but I, I almost kind of view it as having different values of soul body. So there's some part of me where I, my default can often be consciousness, but the truth is I am often also longing for, for a rest in my body that I think the, the fire in me hasn't allowed some of the time or I haven't allowed it. Um, so I think somewhere in me, there's a, yeah, there's, there's a gift of that fire, but also a wound around. Yeah. Coming into matter, someone else who might be really in the matter realms and embodiment might be terrified of um, going up, you know, and, and, and mm -hmm. having, having that, I don't know, going up into cosmology. So, so for me, there's, yeah, there's there's a terror of being loved in those moments that if I if I really it doesn't matter how much I even trust someone if I if I can feel a threshold like something's some deep subtleties wanting to express through my body right now 
that needs that needs my attention and needs a lot of softness mm. um for me to honor that in myself alone is a big deal but then when i have another person in front of me or two people or three people around me where, where i know that there's love there um I know that whatever I'm holding on to to stay in control won't, it'll have to back down if I let that love in. So I think, mm-hmm. I think that that's, that's mm-hmm. part of the fear for me of actually just letting go of control and, and yeah, being loved and, and, and actually somewhere in the part of me that can be so conscious. Um, I long to let go of that some of the time and just, like I know that I'm, 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 I've been better off lately if I don't wake up and journal right away. But if I move my body and dance, and yet some part is terrified of shifting my identity, um, in that way still. So, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I feel that sometimes too, where I'm like on a roll in purpose and like creating and in it, and I'm like, oh my god, if I come down from here and actually connect a, a human to human level, like what's going to happen? Yeah. Am I going to stop? Am I going to slow down? And yeah. I find that's actually where I get nourishment mm. is mm. is for me from from that place of like softening, mm. allowing people to hold me instead of being like I can hold myself and I'm just you know gonna <laughs> yeah <laughs> keep totally. going mm-hmm. yeah 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 um so I would love to hear a little bit about you know, we speak to cosmology and I don't know if people, I mean, who knows people listening, if they know anything about that, Mm. would love to hear what that, I mean, I know it's hard to summarize that, but Mm. if you could give us a little tidbit, um, about what you mean when you say that. So yeah, and grasp that a little better. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. For me, um, I don't actually even know the official definition of cosmology, but I think for me, it's, for me, it's about identifying as the whole, basically. So I feel like there's a difference between having a relationship to the planets or to the stars and kind of this this individual subject-object relationship to like me, other, you know, me interested in astronomy or astrology, and then kind of starting to go a layer deeper of learning about our astrology and realizing, oh my God, this is an archetypal map that can actually help me land more in my identity um, and kind of, you know, not get crazy attached. Like I feel like astrology and human design, we can just get obsessed with Mm -hmm. like, Mm -hmm. I'm I'm a projector. I can't do anything unless I wait for the invitation, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, But for me, cosmology is, is that bigger story that I was sharing about around, oh yeah. Okay. Well, well, what if I start to, connect to the story that I'm, I'm an individual, but I'm a cell part of a nation and this nation's part of a land that's part of a bigger body of earth and earth is a living being and I'm a cell in that living being. And then you expand even more and oh my God, there's a solar system and each of the planets is a living being that also has a soul, just like down to each of my cells and my body. So uh, for me, cosmology is, is, yeah, the awareness, but also the embodiment of starting to know that we're not separate from that life, mm-hmm. and and so in in in, in um in like the esoteric tradition, that's that's more or less what you know God is or deity is just it's not something separate from us. It's it's we are it, and it's like spheres within spheres within spheres within spheres of just a bigger body of of life. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, that's for me, that's what cosmology is. Yeah. And starting to, um, yeah, attune to life where our decisions become less about what we've been taught or who we need to be or, but, but starting to listen to some impulse inside that, that feels quite, um, it can feel quite scary for you know, like the ego or my individual. Um, and then something gets louder where you just hear this knock of like, mm-hmm. take the jump, take the jump. Um, the constant, yeah, the constant recognition that we're part of a larger cycle. Um, yeah, for me, that's some of the flavors of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, for me too. I um, have been thinking about this a lot lately where 
um, just sort of like feeling into this truth for me that there's my body and she has needs. And then there's also the thing that's like, it's not just about me. Mm. You know, <laughs> like mm. <laughs> there's the bigger thing and I'm here to be in service to that. Mm. Um, I'm curious yeah. what your relationship with matter is like, with like the earthly realms and dirt and, you know, like, what is that like? A great question. <laughs> yeah. It, it's, um, yeah. I mean, I feel like that's my work, this life, you know, mm -hmm. matter, money, the earth, um, and also mattering. I, I feel like knowing that I'm the whole and knowing that I'm a soul and it's great. I could, I could, yeah, honestly, I think some of the scariest times in my own inner states have been like, oh yeah, if I don't, if something in me doesn't think I matter enough and I don't actually come down mm -hmm. from cosmos, I could easily be living in the sewers in New York City and still very happy that I'm 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 cosmos, but um yeah, even living in San Francisco, part of me, you know, I'm living in a flat in San Francisco some years ago, but actually it was amazing coming back home to the States and having memories of living in San Francisco and feeling like some of the, some of the places I felt the safe, the safest in matter were with the homeless guys who I hung out on the street with and the, the crazies, mm -hmm. but they, they always felt like they were speaking the truth of cosmos much more than the people who I, um, you know, worked with in a restaurant or an office space. And I mean, um, they might be. <laughs> yeah who you knows, know, you know. Who knows? <laughs> part of me is like i want to yeah that level of madness and uninhibited expression um but yeah and i think in the same way i was sharing about the story from last night there's oftentimes when i'm going through a lot inside to really be loved and especially by nature like to actually bring myself into a forest or by a tree or in, by the sea. It's, it's really vulnerable for me. Um, so my, my dad's a huge nature person. So he's like, he's very much, I'd say re responsible for um, keeping me close to nature when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, in many ways, I feel like coming back to the States has been a massive coming down for me into into matter but yeah spirit and cosmos has been my jam and coming down and remembering that's here as well um mm -hmm. there's no separation between those two that's yeah my path has been coming down for sure mm -hmm. yeah totally yeah and it's it's an interesting thing to be in this work and also be like well i am a human being with my feet on planet earth and i need to eat and make money and provide for myself and yeah. how to have them both in a way that feels so soul aligned. Mm. I think for me with the money thing for so long, I was on that ride of like, oh, I have to make the money and I have to have a 401k that's a bajillion dollars. And I have to, and you know, have the investments and the, this and the, that. And mm. what's shifting for me now is like, I still want those things, but for a different reason. Mm. You know, like I want to be able to support the people that I love and, you know, I don't know, be in another country and be able to give money to somebody who needs it with ease and like generosity. And so I mm. feel like my why can now connect more to to that part of me of like mm. I get to have quality, safety, security. And do I need an excess that the mm. world teaches us that we're supposed to have? Mm. don't need that but here's what I do need is to be able to give back and that feels the truest for me so that's how mm. I'm bridging the two and yeah. um yeah I love that yeah, yeah it feels so much better <laughs> yeah mm. yeah yeah and and there's definitely a a kind of me 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 yeah I remember just when, when my drama queen can be quite active and kind of remember being like, you know, a decade ago and going through some intense relationship stuff. And I call my mom sometimes and she just be like, Jonathan, just get out of the center. Like you're not the center of the universe. Mm -hmm. And her, and her <laughs> advice, her advice would always be like, good, just get the fuck out of the apartment, go into a local shop and talk to a stranger. Mm -hmm. And whenever I did that, it's like, Oh wow. I've been, 
I'm insanely narcissistic in those moments. And, and, and there's a definitely a strong princess in me. That's like, I just like, but it is about me. And I'm, you know, I'm like, I have a Leo rising in my soul. It can be, <laughs> it, can, it can be so beautifully identified with the whole, and it can be like really selfish and self-centered. And so the moments where I've been in that, I, I think that's the other good thing about soul companionship is like, we know each other so deeply and there's something really can be like brutal about knowing each other so deeply as souls. Cause you kind of know, yeah, the stuff that you're like, wow, come on this piece. This is, when are you going to move through this one? And then I, I often feel scared of my soul friends mm -hmm. when I feel the pieces in me that are so inconsolable that I know, okay, I'll, I'm moving through and I'll move through, but to feel their gaze and to know that the people who, you, who know you so deeply and see you as souls, it's, it's really confronting. It's, it's a, it's a beautiful and sometimes very unpleasant mm -hmm. kind of, of intimacy. Yeah. <laughs> hundred percent. I feel that with my friends and mm. they'll reflect something at me and I'd be like, Oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. remember even you had this, we were doing this projection exercise and, and this is the one thing I, the one time you spoke to me and I don't think I responded at all. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> but you walked up to me and you had this projection. I think it was something like, I think you, I have this projection that you, like, like mask the depth of your wisdom with your pleasantness. And I was like, fuck, <laughs> mm. yeah. but like, thank you. You know, mm. it's like sensational to receive these things, but like such deep gratitude for the people who actually gift us those reflections, because mm. if we want to be living fully, like we need that and we can't always see it ourselves. So mm. Thank you to the friends who make me squirm. I love you. <laughs> yeah. Agreed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. so another talent of yours, one of many, I'm sure, is your mm. music. Mm. You're an amazing musician. I felt mm. so captivated by, you know, the I think it was like twice that you played and you sang for us and mm. so beautiful. Like, can you speak to your music a little bit? <laughs> sure, yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, my, my dad was, is a musician. So I grew up, you know, with, with him playing the guitar a lot. He wasn't, there wasn't, the, yeah, not many people in my family who have been musicians, but for some reason, my dad just, yeah, he's an amazing guitar player and also has a level of mastery with the guitar that yeah, honestly, I don't know where he even got it or how it came to him. Um, my great uncle was an amazing violinist as well, who ended up killing himself at a very young age. So there have been times where I really felt him and felt this sense of, um, yeah, deep. I mean, it almost feels like cliche, but like standard heartbreak stuff and the deep human stuff that actually found a home Mm -hmm. in vibration particularly through music and so I, I became obsessed you know at 15 with Bob Dylan and Nick Drake and yeah loving hearing the way my dad plays guitar and and so I never really got formal training but I just I just started singing and playing guitar in, the, in my parents garage at 15 and songwriting just started to become another way that I I share and express mm -hmm. so um so yeah, that, that's definitely a place where I feel like I can, I can hoard my inner resources sometimes. There's a part of me that's always felt like I've definitely had this dream of just touring and gigging all the time, um, mm -hmm. which I've done a little bit of. But um, yeah, for me, there's a there's a way in which mythology wants to come through my music, and so. Um, yeah, lately it feels like that's what it's been. It's been a, a bridge to kind of use this language that, that is music that's so universal, no matter what language you speak or what land you're from. And yeah, I feel like I've just been really open to the words and the tunes that want to come through. And I definitely feel like I should be giving it more time, um, which I feel like I will in the, in the next months. But yeah, it's... it's um, something in me just knows my music's meant to be shared and something also can get quite shy sometimes. Um, but it, but it feels, 
yeah, it feels wrong to to keep that stuff in the drawer, you know? So it would yeah. be yeah. <laughs> sure with us. There's yeah. a there I feel in just the the few, the little that I heard, it's like there's like this like beautiful ache that I feel, you know, you're like, yes. oh, it's kind of like, oh, like it hurts so good kind of feeling. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah blessing the curse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I think I think underneath for me, besides what whatever the song's about underneath the music there's a deep part of my being that that feels really connected to like we are artists as human beings mm -hmm. and and so mm -hmm. in the craziness that's upon us now collectively i also feel like it's a the other side to that is art and this kind of renaissance like quality that could only be related to the ache and the crisis and so i've always loved like especially like teaching someone how to drum or someone finding their voice or finding rhythm. For me, there's just something in our, our nature as artists that um, there's a million ways to convince ourselves we don't have, or we're not that, or I'm not a writer, I'm not a musician. I just think it's bullshit. Honestly, I think there's a, there's a deeply creative note inside of everyone that is dying to come out and, it's like we need rehab, collective rehab to remember that we're fucking artists and sure. And, and we want it from each other. We want to be showered by each other's gifts. Mm. So for I sure. Think, I, yeah. yeah. I feel that in myself when I'm not creating, that's when I mm. start to feel a little cray. I'm like, okay. Yeah. It's been too long. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, totally. <laughs> what kinds of stuff do you like creating? So if my art is the podcast. I mm. make different kinds of like body jewelry that are made from like fine mm. gemstones. They almost look like harnesses and they have cool. different gods and goddesses on them. And mm. I'll show you, but um, great. Yeah. Like creating with my hands feels really good. I love mm. to write. I started writing a book and mm. um, creating different. Uh, I've got this uh, Shakti love fest I'm creating with some of my best girlfriends. So creating mm. spaces, uh, particularly for women around embodiment and getting awesome. to know their pussies and pleasure. And mm. um, so that's happening. And just like lots, I just love, yeah, create like lots of different things. You know, there's so mm. many different ways to be an artist. It's not just paint or music. And yeah. I like to say that, like, I am the artist of my life. Like my life is my art. Mm. and yeah um, mm -hmm. yeah mm. um speaking of creations do you I feel like I saw you have some things coming up like what are you working on yeah so <laughs> I think the most immediate thing or some events planned for the, the states for the next few months um so um yeah me and Anna who you just met in level two as well we, we had this beautiful mm -hmm. co-creation come through us around um my sense is it won't be the, the only one but we're starting yeah to kind of cook a little um shared fire and so we're doing an event on beauty in LA on uh, May 7th and then yeah I'll be in Colorado before that so it'll be kind of a scattering of different events um and me and a buddy um also from new zealand or american from from Haydn, we're going to run some temples in the san francisco area early june and then the, the the biggest thing is this event in august um that will be august 17th to the 23rd called frontier so this is like a yeah it feels like a big deal to to really start to bring a space to the states that I think a lot of people who've done ISTA might be drawn to, or people who haven't, but really starting to tap into some of the mystery school work. And, and so I feel excited that the event feels like it's wanting people to come who are into, who are drawn to it, but also wanting people to come who are interested in showing up kind of as the soul of the United States and um, delving yeah. into yeah, what are the mysteries of the American mystery school and some of the myths of like American dream and manifest destiny, these these principles that have been laid over the culture. But we're, we'll go into this exploration of like, yeah, what does it mean to go into the deeper soul principles of this land that we can all feel in some way in our hearts? So that, yeah, I'm really excited for that. Um, those six nights in August, that'll be near um, near Seattle. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that sounds amazing. And 
And that is like, that feels exciting to me too, because mm. I feel so often, at least in my thoughts, I'm like, oh, other countries and other lands, like they have such deep history and I can really feel their mysteries. And it feels like new here. And and yes, we speak a lot to Native Americans, but like, what is like the, like this, like American piece? I feel like I've kind of just brushed it aside because it doesn't, doesn't feel that pleasant necessarily when I feel into it and think about the things that we've done or where we are and you know so um Mm. so curious to Mm. to hear more about how that unfolds and and Mm. your thoughts on the American mysteries and yeah yeah I, I think for this country there is there's something that I feel really like passionate about with, with with the U.S. that like with every country that the U.S. has a particular like soul expression as does every individual. So for me, um, the United States has demonstrated like the American dream and individuality so much. And, and I feel like my longing or dream is that for a, for a nation, even like New York, the Empire State, someone was reminding me, it's called that America's been this pioneer of like culture and industrialization and the new world and and um, somewhere in what's happening collectively, my sense is, and, and feeling this in my own journey, especially the last year, there's, there's a, I feel like there's a sense of humility that's sometimes hard to access that's needed and and for the states to actually kind of be like i've sort of been a liar like i'm this worked for a while Mm -hmm. and now we don't know the way and actually all the ways that we've said we're serving the whole it's actually been Mm self-serving and so i think there's a kind of yeah an acceleration that the united states i don't want to say it's, it's solely responsible for but for me, the the beings who I'm trying to call to this event are are those who are interested in consenting to the collapse of the American dream, starting within ourselves, mm-hmm. and being in the um, yeah, the the powerlessness and heartbreak of that, and mm-hmm. and um, yeah, and also connecting to the purity of like, what was it that the humans who showed up on this land, what were they feeling in the soul of this land? before they lopped in ideas and principles and, but what, like, what were the soul dreams that the land has already been singing that was singing through the people who first came here. Mm -hmm. That's been, that's been singing through the indigenous tribes. And um, how do we come back to those myths and, and, and yeah, how does that happen nationwide? But, but for this event, it'll be like a, yeah, a a deep shamanic descent into some of that territory. I feel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when you say that, I just imagine feeling like all of these layers that have been built on top of the land that has us not, or me in particular, like not be able to fully feel like what's really here. Yeah. Feeling those melt away and actually really getting to know like the mm-hmm. land and the earth and like the spirit of of this place. Like what it what is it actually? Totally. Yeah. <gasps> so exciting. Yeah. <laughs> amazing work Mm, thank you mm, mm. (laughs) and I think like as we come to a close tell us where people can find you and then we'll drop all of this in the show notes and we'll you know put a link to your social and this event and and some more about you so yeah yeah I think the best way to find me um I'm beginning to put a lot more writing on my sub stack so We'll have my sub stack there. I'll include a link to my music as well, but just reaching out through one of those mediums um, and also on, you know, on Facebook. Um, yeah. My sense is like, if any, if there's been, if there's been any spark or someone wants to reach out or inquire more, but yeah, I feel super open to to that. So um, I think through my writing and the music, it, it'll be maybe a good way to kind of have a little taste of of my inner worlds a bit more. And then, yeah, super open to any dialogues from that. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming today. It was an honor, a pleasure. I'm so grateful mm. for your energy on serving love and mm. 
yeah, thank you so much for saying yes. Yeah, yeah, really grateful you had me and so good to be here with you. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, until next time, love you all.